Hi, I'm Rich Tabor of uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension in Shenango County, New York. And we're here today with Steve Childs, the Cornell University State Maple Specialist. We're going to look at some of the issues that a woodlot owner would have to contend with if they would like to consider getting into either the maple syrup or maple sap production. So, so we have just traveled probably 300 yards to get from where the road uh, meets up with uh, Rich's farm and we just checked the topo map and we are about 20 feet or 30 feet lower than where we would access the road. So what we're going to spend some time on here today is looking at very specific issues of what a person needs to keep in mind when they are considering a woods for a maple operation. So one of the first things that we want to consider here uh, under these circumstances is access. So access is a huge issue. Access from several angles. One is moving the sap uh, out, doing maintenance to your woods, whether you have access to do that, whether you want to put a pump in, whether you have therefore access to electricity, uh, or whether you're gonna try to work with a generator system, all of which involves investment. Access from the perspective of can I actually access all of this woods? Is it too steep, too steep for me to access it? Can I access it with machinery? Can I, do I have to do everything with my legs in this woods? Slope can be a very good thing because sap wants to run downhill. We need a, typically to have at least a 2% slope on our lines. We can get a little bit of that artificially by raising them farther up on one end of the woods and lower on the other end of the woods. But this is an excellent woods from, from a slope perspective. Uh, we would be in what we would call a B grade slope here. If you're in a woods where you get into D type slopes, it becomes difficult to even access that woods on foot. You have to climb immense slopes, they're very slippery. It's a lot of work. So slope becomes a negative issue when it becomes too steep. It's very easy to set your lines up uh, in a woods like this because it, there's just slope everywhere. One of the things you want to avoid, of course, when you set a system up is you don't want to uh, have lines that are dramatically changing slope because that creates places in those lines where it fills up with sap and does not let vacuum work to your benefit. Uh, on the other hand, we talked a little bit earlier about access how this would be a little bit of a problematic woods from an access perspective. There's no electricity anywhere close. And so we probably would not want to have to worry about putting a mechanical vacuum system in this woods. But this would be a wonderful slope for a natural vacuum with 316s tubing. And another advantage of this woods is that we are not uh, seeing a high percentage of evergreen trees mixed in with our maples. Anytime lines pass under a pine tree or a hemlock tree, they risk being a lot longer at thawing and everything above that tree on a line can uh, start to run but not be able to exit. So nothing really happens until it thaws under that evergreen tree. One more issue of access that I think is worth mentioning here is that this woods is not overloaded with undergrowth. We aren't buried in blackberries. We're not against a lot of multiflora rows. The trees aren't climbing with poison ivy. Uh, so from a, a work perspective and a maintenance perspective, this woods would be an easy woods to work. Uh, of course, we'll have to look and see whether we have enough maple trees to make it a, a good operation. Access is pretty critical and it's, and it's a critical issue with this woods.